On June 22, 1941, Nazi Germany launched its invasion of the Soviet Union. 3.5 million German and 700,000 supporting Axis troops crossed the Soviet border and launched their war of annihilation. Operation Barbarossa, the largest invasion in human history, had begun. At the start of the operation, the German advance seemed unstoppable. By the end of June, over 320,000 troops were encircled and captured at Bialystok and Minsk. Another massive encirclement took place at the end of July, with 300,000 Soviet troops encircled and captured at Smolensk. The most impressive encirclement came at Kiev, with over 650,000 Soviet troops being killed or captured. How did the Germans accomplish these impressive victories and why did the operation ultimately fail? Let's start off by analyzing why the Germans initially succeeded. Number one, aerial superiority. The initial German air attacks destroyed hundreds of planes on the ground and easily destroyed any disorganized Soviet units that got into the air. The Germans could rely on the superb BF-109 fighter to perform well against its Soviet rivals and help establish control of the skies. German bombing raids then targeted Soviet troop concentrations, impeded road and rail movement, and disrupted Soviet communication facilities. This constant harassment of Soviet supply and troop movements gave the Germans a massive advantage and helped them secure many of their initial gains. Number 2. Stalin's Ignorance Stalin had received many warnings about the impending German invasion from several sources. Winston Churchill, the Yugoslav ambassador to Moscow, and several German deserters all warned Stalin of the German military buildup along the border. Stalin chose not to believe the reports, believing them to be propaganda to try and force him into war. Thus, he did not place his border units on alert, which led to the initial devastation. Number 3. Practice makes perfect. The previous campaigns against Poland, Norway, Denmark, France and the Low Countries, Greece and Yugoslavia gave the German army a plethora of experience. The Germans had refined their combined arms tactics and, in the words of historian Robert Centino, had the thing down to a well-practiced drill. The early German victories made many believe at the time that the war in the East had been lost for the Soviets. However, this was simply not the case, and the Germans would eventually be halted at the gates of Moscow. Let's now look at why the operation ultimately failed. Number 1. Outdated Luftwaffe Aircraft while the Luftwaffe's BF-109 was a fantastic fighter aircraft, the fact of the matter was that many of the other aircraft in the Luftwaffe were becoming outdated. This was highlighted during the Luftwaffe's air campaign over Britain that had begun a year earlier. While the deficiencies did not seem very significant at the start of the war in the East, the Luftwaffe would eventually see its aircraft whittled away. While many of their bombers performed better than their Soviet counterparts, they were limited in range and payload, including the DO-17 and HE-111. Even the versatile JU-88 was inadequate in these areas. This proved to be a significant problem when operating in such a large theater of war. While the JU-87 Stuka was very accurate against ground targets, it was very vulnerable to enemy fighters and was completely dependent on air superiority. By the end of July 1941, the Luftwaffe had only 1,045 serviceable aircraft across the entirety of the Eastern Front. The German Air Force became overextended and had to operate like a fire brigade, rushing between emergencies and attempting to support newly formed offensive thrusts. For this reason, total aerial superiority could not be achieved. Number 2. Supply Chain Issues Contrary to popular belief, the majority of the German army was not mechanized or motorized. The German army consisted mostly of troops marching on foot and horse-drawn artillery and supplies. This caused the German motorized and mechanized spearheads to advance at a rate far faster than their foot-based troops and caused supply lines to get overstretched. This was not helped by the autumn rains, which turned the dirt roads into mud. Horse-drawn supplies would become stuck and the operations had to come to a halt. Number 3. Soviet Weaponry and Will to Fight 
The Germans were surprised with the quality of the Soviet weaponry, particularly with the medium T-34 tank and heavy KV-1 tank. While these tanks were by no means in perfect working order at the outbreak of hostilities, even small numbers of them could cause massive problems for the Germans. A single KV-1 was reported to have cut off the motorized brigade of the 6th Panzer Division for a full two days while it was driving towards Leningrad. German anti-tank gunners were also shocked to see their shells bounce off the sloped armor of the T-34. The strong resistance the Soviet troops were willing to put up cannot go unmentioned. Their will to fight was greater than the Germans anticipated, and the Soviets would fight with a ferocity and commitment that the Germans had not seen in any of their other Western enemies. While the operation saw many grand victories at its start, the German advance eventually ground to a halt, and the Germans would never have the parade through Moscow that they once dreamed about. While the tide did not completely turn against the Germans until the Battle of Kursk in 1943, the failure of Barbarossa was a warning to the Germans of what was to come.